We go for substance, not pizzazz. That's what Boeing's vice president of commercial crew told Eric Burge in 2014 when asked about competing with SpaceX. Now let's see what their substance can do. 14 years with only three flight tests and none of them is fully successful, milking $5.1 billion from the Congress. Now their stranded Starliner is waiting for SpaceX's rescue mission. In contrast, SpaceX's Pizzazz Dragon has soared up with 10 flights for NASA, not to mention four private spaceflight missions. Talking about this, Elon Musk recently revealed one more reason why Boeing should be deemed as a despicable lobbyist. Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. NASA's decision to allow Boeing's troubled Starliner to launch with the crew again has become the subject of public ridicule. Imagine if you were the next astronaut chosen to fly over this death trap again. Anyway, don't too worry because I bet that out of the $267,000 in funding NASA paid SpaceX last month, they probably booked some rescue missions. Of course, that might change if CFT's uncrewed return has issues, such as the deorbit burn. But this could not happen because the confidence of NASA's Bill Nelson on Starliner raised to 100%. And Bill Nelson is just a representative of many other bureaucrats who have been pro-Boeing from the very beginning. Sometimes we can't understand how a vehicle as incredibly incompetent as the Starliner has survived to this day. Why does Boeing always get leniency and surprising extra money after its humiliating failures? Why is SpaceX always discriminated against, even though it tries to do so much good? There's even a theory. If SpaceX and Boeing were in reverse positions, meaning Dragon got stuck and Starliner came to the rescue, well, NASA would never be this silent. Clearly, there's a hidden political secret here. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk continued his series, Boeing and the Untold Stories, with the tweet, hardly anyone knows that there was a massive massive effort to block SpaceX from providing astronaut transport for NASA. His tweet indicates the sad reality in the early days of NASA's commercial crew program. The intense lobbying and opposition space has faced from established aerospace companies, particularly Boeing. The 100-year history giant company was described as a despicable lobbyist. They engaged in lobbying efforts to maintain its dominance and secure contracts for crew transportation. This included campaign contributions and other forms of influence aimed at persuading government officials about the risks associated with newer entrants like SpaceX. Clearly, all of these things were significantly supported by many bureaucrats. As you see in this table, the lion's share of commercial crew development contracts is in CCT cap. Thus, the greedy wanted to sole source all of this to Boeing. Berger's forthcoming book, Reentry, revealed Boeing had a solution, telling NASA it needed the entire commercial crew budget to succeed. Because a lot of decision makers believed that only Boeing could safely fly astronauts, the company's gambit very nearly worked. As a result, a cascade of pro-Boeing opinions swept around the table, a building an unbreakable wave of consensus, the book wrote. But NASA's human exploration lead Gersten Meyer then asked for more budget to support two competing efforts. Boeing finally received twice as much funding as the new entrant, SpaceX, but this still failed to satisfy the company. Hardly imagine how large the wave of opposition to SpaceX was at that time. By then, the U.S. space industry was on the threshold of commercialization, and the agency just early interacted with SpaceX. Critics from within the traditional aerospace sector often raised concerns about SpaceX's safety protocols and the reliability of its technology. Conservatives were probably failing to understand that something that doesn't include their establishment buddies could be done better, faster, cheaper. You should forget or should not forget that Neil Armstrong was one of several astronauts to diss the commercial space industry. In 2012, the first man to walk on the moon sent a letter to 60 Minutes with the content as follows. I support the encouragement of the newcomers toward their goal of lower cost access to space. But having cut my teeth in rockets more than 50 years ago, I am not confident. The most experienced rocket engineers with whom I have spoken believe that it will require many years and substantial investment to reach the necessary level of safety and reliability, he wrote. Musk's response to the letter in 60 Minutes made many people hold back a little tear when he was talking about his heroes doubting him. I was very sad to see that. Uh, because those guys are, you know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. Former NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden discussed the anti-SpaceX trend with Aviation Week during an October 19th, 20 podcast. I don't think we would have been anywhere with commercial crew if it hadn't been for Boeing coming into the fray. 
Nobody liked SpaceX, to be honest, on the Hill. It is clear that the old fart suspicion of a new kid on the block is just the tip of the iceberg. More importantly, it's about their efforts to protect their interests in the competitive landscape of commercial spaceflight. NASA's leaders were typically astronauts and engineers who didn't question the public value or relevance of their activities. Indeed, many considered flying themselves and their friends in space to be an entitlement. Former NASA Deputy Administrator Lori Garver wrote in her book, Escaping Gravity, My Quest to Transform NASA and Launch a New Space Age. They had little interest in transitioning what they enjoyed and got paid to do over to the private sector, and they assumed that was their decision. Perhaps they predicted something in the future, and so Elon Musk does. 17 years ago, he made a very accurate prediction. Do you think people like uh, Boeing and Orion Space are, are getting worried? Yeah, I think Boeing and Ariane are to some degree concerned about uh, SpaceX because I think that they, they would have a great deal of difficulty competing with us on, on price. Wow, it's not exaggerated to say that Elon is a visionary, and what he predicted completely comes true. Now, SpaceX has achieved goals more than anyone beyond our imagination. Guess who's been to the ISS regularly and who has still been in the test phase and hasn't had the perfect flight yet? One more interesting tidbit about Boeing's humiliation. In 2017, Boeing CEO Dennis Moylenberg, who was fired in the aftermath of two crashes of the 737 MAX and its subsequent groundings, challenged Elon Musk's so-called cowboy company. We're going to beat Elon Musk to Mars. Elon Musk responded, do it. The Boeing company also quickly replied, game on. The war of words from years ago was once again dug up as a way to mock Boeing's arrogant attitude. With the tweet, how is it going? Elon replied slyly, the new Boeing CEO is spending time in the factories. That is the right thing to do. The new Boeing chief executive here is Kelly Ortberg, who has been struggling to clean the garbage made by two of his predecessors. The obstacles awaiting him in the future are enormous. The list is a long one, as he attempts to staunch the bleeding from the company's plethora of self-inflicted wounds, while also putting the airframer on a more secure footing for the future. So, can he turn troubled Boeing around? In Elon's own words, all managers in a technical area must be technically excellent managers. Kelly has a plus compared to Dennis and Dave. He is a mech engineer, and he can understand principles like thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, materials science, and structural analysis which form the backbone of mechanical engineering. Kelly Ortberg is the former chairman and CEO of Rockwell Collins CEO of Collins Aerospace and a member of the company's board of directors. Ortberg brings more than 30 years of experience in aerospace and defense, including numerous executive positions. Prior to his current role, he was CEO of Collins Aerospace and had also served as chairman and CEO of Rockwell Collins. Before that, he was executive vice president and chief operating officer of the company's government systems business and chief operating officer of its commercial systems business. However, to revive an empire that had been rotten for nearly 30 years, he needs more than that. It has never been easy. What he should implement for Boeing this time is a profound cultural overhaul that requires analytical thinking and creative solutions. So how about you? Do you believe in Kelly's capability? No one wants to see the giant plane maker Boeing fall. So if you agree, let's comment. Kelly Ortberg in the comment section below. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.